Hi there, it's Lori, and I'm coming to you face to face today because I'm changing up the way I'm going to use this channel. And I thought if I started off the end of the year <clears throat> with kind of an intention setting video to share with you what I envision this might become, perhaps I'll be more accountable in 2019. I know that when I first started this channel, I really had a feeling that I was going to be very prolific and share a lot of memory keeping and scrapbooking and maybe other kinds of videos with you, but I never really got centered around what this channel might look like, and I never really made it a priority. I work for myself. I'm a professional coach, consultant, and occasionally do some training. And as a result, I do a lot of work in this very room. This is my office slash studio. I share it with my partner who is an artist. And sometimes we're in here together. Sometimes we're not. Sometimes that's conducive and sometimes it's not. So I work here predominantly during the day unless I'm traveling or meeting with a client in their space. And I am able to work here well into the night, sometimes uh, not taking lunch. So it's a pretty packed day. And I don't always want to come back in here in the evening or even first thing in the morning and make time for videos, uh, both recording and editing. However, it is important to me. I love YouTube. I love watching other people's creative shares. I love watching content that people create for BookTube videos. I'm really stunned by the amount of information that is shared on YouTube. And so it's one of my favorite vehicles for social media, viewing anyway, and consuming. I also use social media in other ways through Facebook, Instagram. And so I've been a little bit more consistent with some personal sharing rather than just professional sharing in the last month or two. So I think this is a great time for me to launch a new way of being and doing on this channel, as well as to be able to track it differently. I'm creating a planner just for social media slash YouTube. So hopefully that will help this year. And I'll share that in another video as well. I love planners. It's kind of an obsession. Okay. So we're going to start with a review, uh, not a review, a um, video about my book haul for the month of December. Let me just say that this first video is probably going to be very awkward. I'm going to want to change it, edit it, do all those things. But honestly, I don't have those skills yet and I don't have time to do that. So we're just going to let it be what it is. I am a perfectly imperfect person. <laughs> and so my videos will probably be perfectly imperfectly all the way along. I'm sure though that next year when I mark the anniversary of this recommitment to YouTube that it will be much better and much more robust. Okay, so here we go. For Christmas, I got a couple of really great books and I'm so excited about them. And this one is actually a reader's journal. It's the Well-Read well -read Women and it's so beautiful. So I've had a book journal before. I printed it out. I got it from, it's free. I got it downloaded. I think it was free. Downloaded it from the Modern Miss, Mrs. Darcy site. I love her podcast. If you've never listened to it, I will do a, a book sort of a video on book two video on the book bookish podcast that I love, but that's for another day. Anyway, well-read woman. Great information uh, collecting in here. You can see how pretty it is. There's a space for you to record the books that you're reading and give comments about them. So I won't forget when I'm doing um, reviews for this channel. It also has one of my favorite things, some art, some amazing art and quotes from classics and books that are just full of really inspirational things. This is actually from Pride and Prejudice. So I really love that because it's one of my favorite books ever. There's also books to check out. And so you make a list of things that you want to read. There's a list of prize winning books at the end, as well as notes and observations in the event that you run out of room in the first part of the book. So it's got lots of great things. Um, this is from Jane Eyre. Look how beautiful that is. This watercolor art, you guys, in 
incredible. Well-read women, great way for me to track my books this year and my progress on my goal. I'm going to really push myself for a stretch goal too, which is a little scary. A Christmas Carol. I have wanted another copy of A Christmas Carol since 2006. Um, we lost, I can tell you why I know that, we lost all of our books in 2005 to a hurricane that struck our community and wiped us all out. And I had a really wonderful copy of A Christmas Carol from childhood. And one of the things that made it so wonderful for me was that it was illustrated by Arthur Rackham. And I've always just felt like that helped me to lose myself in this story. I could see it in a way that just was glorious, right? And so I, when I put this on my Christmas list for years and years and years, I wasn't as specific as I was this year. Maybe that's what did the trick, but I said I really wanted a copy that had illustrations by Arthur Rackham, and I got it from my partner. Beautiful, red, bright cover. I will not hesitate to read this this year before the end of the year, as well as every year as I used to do. It was kind of a Christmas tradition for me. I also used to read Little Women every year. And I haven't done for a long time. I lost my copy of Little Women, actually, also, that I got when I was nine from my cousin. It was one of my first, I think it was my first big girl book, and it meant so much. Anyway, that copy drowned as well. I'll maybe, hopefully, replace it one day soon. But in the meantime, I actually put this one on my list this year on my Christmas list and my daughter-in-law son and my granddaughters got this one for me, Marmy and Louisa by Eve Plant, Eve LaPlante, Eve LaPlante, who is actually the great niece and first cousin of um, Marmy and Louisa May Alcott. So that's really special. I saw or heard a blip about this book on NPR, and it is actually one of the top 10 books of the year rated by NPR. So I love it. And it is a biography of these two women and their time together as Louisa was coming up as a, well, I'm sure as a child, but also as a writer, it goes into their adult lives too. So very excited to take a look at this and Little Women at some point. Then this one, which is really heavy, <laughs> um, I have always loved Winnie the Pooh since I was a child. This is an anniversary co complete collection of all of the books, stories, and poems. My partner got me this as well. Again, it's just beautiful. I am so excited, by the way, this book um, is laid out. That's the back of it, too. Um, again, all the stories, the, the original illustrations by E.H. Shepard, which are also important to me. Um, when I love a book like this, I often love it because not only because of the stories, but because of the illustrations. And so I think that I can't imagine, I'm, maybe, I'm not even sure that Winnie the Pooh can be published without those original illustrations. That may be part of the copyright nevertheless perfect so those were my gift book um, haul for the month of December I also though got some gift cards or gift certificates from bookstore so this one came from Barnes & Noble as you can see I got a Barnes & Noble gift card that I was able to use and I love Kate Morton I have not read all of Kate Morton's books but I've read several of them and I really enjoy them and I've loved this cover since the moment I first saw it as you can see, this is a Barnes & Noble uh, exclusive edition, so it comes with an extra essay in it, but I can't wait to take a look at this. In the meantime, though, I just love to, to just peruse this cover and, and just enjoy it. it. Even if I didn't love Kate Morton, I feel like this would have been a cover buy for me. So while I was at Barnes & Noble, that one did uh, make, meet my gift card um, cost and a little bit more, but I picked this up at the bargain table. I have never read a Jodi Picoult book before. I think I have a preconceived notion of what she would be like as an author, and I'm probably wrong. And the reason I say that is because when I heard probably on booktube about this book and the premise of it, the plot of it, I was somewhat surprised that, I guess I thought Jodi Picoult just wrote 
romances and that's not a genre I typically read a lot of unless I'm in a reading slump or unless I don't know every once in a while I do it I used to read romances during midterm and finals after the big tests in my life in college but not anymore so anyway this book actually the plot of it or the premise of it I'll tell you is about a labor and delivery nurse at a Connecticut hospital and she's an African-American nurse and a child comes in with a family who are white supremacists and they ask for a different nurse to treat their baby so the hospital assigns a different nurse but in the middle of the night or at some point when no one else is around the baby is in distress and apparently life or death distress and so the nurse has to decide whether to perform CPR or to do nothing because she's been taken off the baby's case. Quite a plot, right? Sounds like an amazing story. And I've heard a lot of people loved it. The ratings on Goodreads are pretty high. I didn't write them down before this video, but I remember seeing that they were pretty high. This was again on the bargain table, so I just picked it up because I was there already. And then finally, I also got this. This was given to me, uh, well, this one was acquired by a book gift certificate from my local bookstore, Bay Books. Got it for my birthday in September, hadn't used it yet. Kate Atkinson came out with this book. I think this was a 2018 release, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I love Kate Atkinson. Yeah, she wrote this in 2018, actually in September. And this is the first edition, so that's exciting. I've read Life After Life and A God in Ruins by Kate Atkinson. Loved them both so much. Didn't read any of her other stuff. I have another book of hers on my bookshelf from a library book sale, but I haven't picked it up. It's more of a mystery, I think. And these uh, books, including this one that I read of hers, are historical fiction genres. This looks like a dual timeline, a woman who works as a um, as a spy, it looks like during the war in 1940 or right before the war begins. And then later she's a radio producer at the BBC and she's confronted by some people from her past. And so it's a dual timeline. Love those. Love Kate Atkinson. It's not as thick as some of her other books are. Uh, it's probably not as difficult to read as a Life After Life was. Life After Life is a great read if you've never taken a look, uh, but it's not easy to um, follow sometimes. It's a neat, neat plot. And again, I loved it, but it, it, I think I'm going to have to read it again and again and again to be able to cement some of that in my brain. But I'm going to take a look at this one this year for sure. And I kind of have a goal. Look at this cover too. I mean, that is just gorgeous. I kind of have a goal to read more historical fiction this year. I have acquired a lot of historical fiction in 2018, both from purchasing on Kindle as well as physical copies and a couple of um, sales that I was able to find some things that I never have been able to take a look at. So that is a genre I'm really going to steep myself in this year. I also buy a lot of self-help books for work. I get some uh, advanced reader copies. I also get some copies sent to me by coaches and self-help authors that I know, and occasionally they're recommended for me in, as a part of continuing coach education or in classes I'm taking. So I just ordered three books uh, yesterday for work uh, for me to take a look at in 2019. So I may just show those before the end of the year, or I may just show them when I read them and review them. I'm also trying to finish up a couple before the end of the year, just because I have too many books on my currently reading list at the moment. So one of my goals is not to read so many books at one time because I think I get bogged down and overwhelmed by then, by them, and then I'm not able to finish them like I would like. Okay. I would love it if you would subscribe or like this video or both. Uh, bear with me as I begin this journey into really committing to YouTube and really putting myself out there in a way that feels awkward and awkward. So comment if you would about the books that you received in December, about any videos you might want to see. If you read uh, nonfiction, if you read fiction, 
who your favorite authors are, whatever you want me to know. And I will take that into consideration as I create videos for the new year. Thanks again. I appreciate your patience with me as I get this goal into fruition this year. And as I really explore ways in which I can grow this audience with my voice that isn't always comfortable. Have a very, very safe and happy new year. I may see you again before the year ends. If not, let's begin 2019 in a really intentional way together. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.